Good morning, everyone. Thomas here with TNT Munitions. Uh, I wanted to take a few minutes this morning just to remake a video that I made several months ago regarding our 300 blackout kit for the Hornady Rifle bullet feeder die. I wanted to mainly remake the video because we had some inquiries about the kit, and uh, after the inquiries, I just feel like I might could do a little bit better of a job on explaining the initial setup instructions as far as getting the depth of the die set up for the uh, casing activation and the overall length of the cartridge. So uh, with that being said, uh, first things first, what I want to do is, is just lay out some prerequisites that you got to have uh, for the kit to be able to work. Um, obviously you got to have Hornady's 30 caliber conversion kit for the um, Hornady rifle bullet feeder die. Um, you can pick that up in several different places online, and I believe even a few stores sell it if you want to go to the big box stores. Uh, that's not really my preference. I believe it's Field and Stream or maybe Dick's. But um, I think where we ended up getting it was Mid-South Shooter Supply. Uh, I think they were ended up being the cheapest, so you may want to go check them out um, and just make sure you got that. And uh, that part number for that is on our website uh, under the product details page. Um, after that, you're definitely going to need the uh, short trim tool head for the uh, Dillon Precision Press that you're running. Uh, let me just state this real quick. Uh, we have actually only tested this, uh, this kit on uh, Dillon Precision's progressives, including the RL550, the XL650, and the Super 1050. Um, the Hornady die itself will not work on the RL-1050. Um, the stroke uh, from the press frame up to the bottom of the tool head um, is about an inch shorter than the Super 1050. And the problem that you run into with the die is that the bullet funnel will actually get caught up on the top of the, over, um, the cartridge upon the press indexing. Um, the bullet funnel could be modified to where the this kit and the die would work on an RL 1050, but we've just not gotten to that point yet because we have all Super 1050s and uh, we just hadn't gotten that far. But uh, like I said, you're going to need the uh, short trim tool head for whichever press you're running. Uh, this is a Super 1050. Um, as you can see, you got the tool head right here is actually milled out. Um, up above here uh, as far as stations uh, where the my powder drop is and I got my powder check here and then this is where we're actually going to put the die so um, they do have that tool head for the 550 650 and 1050 on their website and we also had those product numbers uh, on our website underneath the products detailed page uh, they initially made that tool head for converting 556 to 300 blackout, and it works great for that, and it actually works really good for this as well. Um, you can also take a regular tool head, and if you have the capability of like a mill or something like that, you can just mill you out a spot right here. Um, I would probably mill out probably just these two stations. Um, you could do that if you have that capability. That will work as well. So um, those are the prerequisites you're going to have to have. Um, Next, what I want to do is I want to kind of get into how the kit come about as far as why we developed the kit. And uh, then I'm going to get into the initial setup of the die um, and go through the parts of the die and how they compare to the parts in our kit. And then we'll uh, do a quick run of some ammunition and just show it to you in action for a little bit. So with that being said, um, let me just kind of let you know where the kit come about and what our thinking was behind the kit. Um, we When we got started loading, we wanted to be able to have a powder check in place without having to have a combination seat and crimp die um, since we had bullet feeders. Um, and the main reason we wanted the powder check was all our presses are automated, uh, all our dealings are, so we just wanted to make sure that we weren't having any go through that had no charge or that were double charged. Um, 
And really at the time, you only had two options as far as if you had a bullet feeder um, on your tool head. You would have, if you had the powder check, like right here after your powder drop, you would have to have your bullet drop here, and then you would have to have a combination seat and crimp die here. And like I said, we didn't really want to have a combination seat and crimp die. Um, that's just our preference. I, I feel like you get better ammunition if you seat and crimp in separate stations. Um, not saying you can't get good ammunition doing it all in one station, but I just like to do it in separate stations. Um, your other option was you didn't have a powder check, and you would have your bullet drop here, and then you would have your bullet seat here, and then you would have a crimp here. And obviously you don't get the powder check with that uh, method. There's problems with both methods outside of the powder check. Um, that is really even a bigger issue that we experienced. And if some of you are out there loading, especially subsonic 300 blackout, you're probably experiencing it as well. Whenever you have the bullet drop and then it's seated in the station after that, especially if you're loading a subsonic round of 300 blackout where you're using like a 200, 220, 240 grain projectile um, or either some lower grain solid copper or solid brass projectiles like made by Maker or Lehigh Defense, you run into that the bullet is so long and is so top heavy that after it drops and the press indexes to the next station for it to be seated, that the whole cartridge wobbles significantly to where the die crashes into the bullet or it's so top heavy that the bullet actually falls off of the mouth of the casing and that's a whole nother nightmare and a lot of aggravation and we did experience that and uh, that was the main reason that we actually uh, ended up loving this setup that we have now with the um, Hornady rifle bullet feeder die uh, so what we really decided to do was, um, from the factory, the Hornady's die will not do 300 blackout. It will only do from 300 Savage up to, I believe it's 300 Remington Ultra Mag. So we decided to go ahead and get the kit, uh, get the die and experiment with it. And after some prototyping and tweaking, um, I'm happy to say that we actually we're able to come up with a kit and make it where we can load this uh, 300 blackout in this method where we're actually dropping and seeding the bullet in the same station and then we can crimp after that and have a powder check before it so we've loaded hundreds of thousands of rounds with this kit um, we love it we feel like it's the only way to load uh, 300 blackout on a progressive like this um, you know and the, the die itself will actually, um, from the factory, it will actually uh, drop, seat, and crimp all in one station. Um, but it will not be able to do 300 blackout like that just because the cartridge is so short. Um, but if you are loading something else, like 300 Savage on up to 300 Remington Ultra Mag, just know that you do have that capability um, if that is something you want to do. Um, with that being said, uh, let me move on to the parts that are in the kit and how they actually differ from the parts that are in the die from Hornady. Um, after you get your kit, probably the first thing you're going to notice that is quite a bit different than the parts of the die from Hornady is our uh, bullet ramp. And this is ours right here. And what we did was we have a, we extended this pin. And I got Hornady's right here that actually comes in the die. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's quite a bit longer. Um, the, the profiles of the bullet ramp are actually the same, but the pin is significantly longer. And uh, that's necessary for the short 300 blackout casing uh, to activate the die. The next thing you're going to probably notice that's quite a bit different is our seating stem. This is our seating stem here. 
Um, and then here is Hornady's that comes in to die. Uh, again, as you can see, it's quite a bit longer. Um, and that's necessary because of the short overall length of the 300 blackout cartridge. Um, we actually also added more to the top up here. And we mainly did that for um, any abuse that they may encounter uh, while running on the press, especially if you're running an automated press. Um, it's very, very rare, but it is possible um, for it to happen. But like I said, it's extremely rare for that to happen. But uh, we're running uh, Mark 7s on all our presses here. And, uh, you know, whether you got that or the ammo bot, whichever one you got, um, it just helps with that. And we also added the bevel here underneath the top which really helps with uh, loading at those higher speeds that you would be loading at on an automated system like 2,000 rounds and above uh, per hour. So that's the seating stem. Um, next thing we got here is the stainless steel sleeve. And this is necessary if you are running a 1050. Um, and I'll get a little bit more of that in the next few minutes uh, when I get to the initial setup. Uh, and last but not least, you got your O-ring here. Uh, the O-ring is really just more or less of a safety measure. Um, it just helps prevent the seating stem from any overswing that it may possibly do, uh, which could cause um, some interference between the seating stem and the bullet funnel. Um, with that being said, let's move on to getting the die set up. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is just go ahead and remove everything out of the die body. And I got my die body here. Um, and just ignore this extra slot that's right here in ours. Um, we did that, uh, trying to experiment with this thing before we got everything figured out during the kit. Um, that slot will not be in yours, you know, uh, we, that's just there, we had it there, and it really doesn't serve anything now, but, uh, before you put the die body in, go ahead and take your, uh, O-ring, and, uh, just slide it down on top, like so, and we're going to put it, rest it right here in this groove, let's go ahead and do that before I forget that, Okay. And now we'll uh, just thread it down into our tool head. And once you got it started, take your lock ring and you can put your lock ring on the bottom side. So we'll thread it down about like it right there. I know that's probably not quite enough, but we'll find out for sure here in a second. Um, and I want to show you this real quick before um, I move on. This is the purpose of the short trim tool head. Um, you have to have the die body oriented so that this slot right here is facing out this way to in this area. So from maybe like uh, 7 o'clock to maybe 9 o'clock orientation and that is so that the seating stem swings out over this empty space that's in the tool head okay all right next thing we're going to do is if you're running a 1050 take your sleeve here and slide it up on the bottom of your bullet funnel like so if you're not running a 1050 or if you're running a 550 or a 650, we've experienced that the sleeve is not necessary. Um, what the sleeve does is for the 1050, it helps to lift the funnel so that whenever the press indexes, it will clear the uh, longer overall length cartridges of the 300 blackout. Like if you're running subsonics that are you know, a little over two inches or above, like I know Maker, the 200 grain, Paul recommends setting the overall length at uh, 2.125. You will definitely need 
this sleeve if you are running something out that long uh, maybe even a little bit shorter than that you'll need it so that the press can clear uh, or the die can clear whenever the press indexes after you got your sleeve on there just take the whole thing and drop it down into your die body like so and then take your bullet drop assembly which is this big thing the red extrusion and then take your bullet ramp that come in your kit put your spring that come with your factory die don't lose this spring they're really easy to lose I've about lost this thing I don't know how many times and just slide that over your pin and then you're just going to insert it up into the bottom of the assembly okay next what you need to do is, is press up on the bullet ramp until this flip block is fully engaged so we're just going to press up like so something about like that and then you're going to need to hold the bullet ramp in place and make sure you got your flip box fully engaged still once you got that in place take your calipers and we're going to measure this distance right here from the bottom of the assembly to the bottom of the bullet ramp Looks like I got 0 0.735, so 0 0.734, 0.735, something like that. And you're going to want to write that measurement down, because we're going to need that here in just a minute. Okay. Once you got that written down, take a 300 blackout casing so it's a not primed no powder no bullet and we're going to just put it at this station here now i'm running a mark 7 but if whether you're using a manual press or whether you're automated uh, you need to get to the bottom of the stroke so i'm going to move the bottom And what I'm going to do is measure this um, distance right here from the top of this step to the top of my bullet funnel. And that distance needs to be the measurement that you wrote down a while ago. Ours was uh, 734. So I believe we're short of that. Looks like we're at about 675. Yeah. So we need to go one more turn on our die because just a little hint if you don't know the thread pitch on these dies 7 8 by 14 is around 70 thousandths for one whole turn. So one turn should do it. Yep, I'm at about 7 4 2 right there. And that's okay to be a little bit over. You just don't want to be under and you don't want to be significantly over. And you do have to keep in mind that when you are tightening down the die, that you do have to keep this orientation to where this slot is pointing out from like about seven o'clock to around nine o'clock. So you may end up being a little bit over your measurement that you had and that's fine. All right, now that we got that done, I'm gonna move back to the top. Get this casing out of the way. Get this one out of the way. All right. Next, what we need to do is take our upper assembly of our die, which is all of this right here. And we're going to 
slide our seating stem through it just like that. Okay. Then I need to thread in my seating stem stop, which is this piece right here. Get it started. Have kind of an idea where I need to be for the bullets we're loading. Um, and I'll just show you this real quick while I got it right here. I don't know if you can see that too well or not. You see I got a paint mark right there and I have a paint mark up here on my die. And I've had this thing set up several times and I just put that there after I get it set up so that I know kind of where to go back to. So you may want to do that after you get um, your die set up. Let me kind of explain the workings of this real quick. Um, this right here is the stop for crimping. If you want to, like I said, this this die will crimp from 300 Savage all the way up to, I believe, 300 Remington Ultra Mag. If you do want to drop, seat, and crimp all in one station, you can do that. And that's what this stop right here is for. And that's what this ring right here is for, to thread this down so that this stop engages your bullet funnel upon activation. So that is there. If you do want to do that for taller cartridges, we cannot do that for 300 blackout. So what I recommend is, is leaving, thread this ring down to about halfway. You can see how I have it right here to where you got just a couple of threads down here after your O-ring is on there. And then you can just tighten it down like that. This up here is your bullet, um, your seating stem stop. This is what I use to adjust all of my overall length after I have the depth of my die set. So this is where I'm doing all my adjustment for the overall length of my cartridge. And then this is just basically a lock washer with a flat O-ring underneath it to hold it in place. So you're going to take this whole assembly and you're just going to thread it down into your die. Now I forgot to lock down my die. Before you do that, make sure you lock down your die. Do that real quick. Okay, there we go. Now, we'll thread it down. I'm going to go ahead and get my paint marks lined up. Something like that. Okay. Now, if you know, if you already have a cartridge, um, a finished cartridge, what we're loading right here is a uh, 200 grain spear hot core uh, subsonic. If you already have an over, a finished cartridge and you know their overall length, then you can set, go ahead and get your overall length set up in the die. And what we're going to do is, I believe these things are around 2.060. Uh, 2.057 so yeah we're shooting point 2.060 and you may want to write that down just so you have it as reference if you don't have already have it written down and what we're going to do is place that cartridge right there in that station and we're going to do the same thing again we're, you don't want to thread this down too far because you may not know so you want, may want to back that up but we're going to do the same thing again we're going to move to the bottom of the stroke and now we can thread this down until we feel it stop. And that will set our bullet stem to where that will set the overall length for what we have it set as. Feels like about right there. Feels pretty good. And now we're going to go back to the top of the stroke. Let's pull this out. And you may just want to give that just a little bit more of a turn, just to be sure. You can always back it up later. Um, your seating stem stop up here has a thread pitch of where one turn is roughly 55 thousandths. So that kind of help you out as well um, if you need to make some adjustments. I recommend making a paint mark on there somewhere so you know how much you're actually turning it since this is a knurled um, bolt. 
All right, that's it as far as initial setup. Um, next, all we need to do is basically take our bullet drop assembly, set it on the die, put our clamp on. I will mention one thing about the clamp. The clamp comes from the factory with a brass thumb screw. That brass thumb screw is extremely easy to break. I would recommend re-tapping it if you have a tap set and just put something a little bit heavier duty in there like a cap screw or something like that that's not going to break so easy. Next I need to hook up my bullet feeder. I'm using Double Alpha's Mr. Bullet Feeder um, and the main reason why is we already had these before we bought the kit and um, I honestly just prefer them better over Hornady's. Uh, you can use whichever one you want. Um, if you do use Double Alpha's Mr. Bullet Feeder, you will have to um, pull apart your uh, Mr. Bullet Feeder or somehow make you an adapter to where you can hook up uh, your um, stop switch, your, the cherry switch up here to the uh, aluminum that the bullets drop down through of the die. Uh, let's see. Finish getting this hooked up. Turn my bullet feeder on. And add a few more bullets. And what I'm going to do next is, before I started the video, I already had all this loaded on here. I just pulled it off. So I'm going to load my shell plate back up. And then I'll be ready to go and I'll show it to you in action. Now, before you hit single cycle or you pull down on the lever or anything like that uh, let me just mention this real quick our first bullet has dropped right here as you can see but there's currently no bullet down here in our bullet funnel so I guess for lack of a better term you basically need to prime this system just push over on that like that our first bullet dropped down it's down here at the bullet funnel so whenever this Whenever your press goes down, the bullet will come right here and it'll activate the system and it'll drop the next one. So now we're good to go. I'm just going to hit end cycle or single cycle so you can see it one time. And there you go. Let me just check my overall length before I run these. We're at 2.060. Well, well, I moved it. But 2.063, roughly. So, we're pretty good. I'm going to stick with it right there. And I want to hit run. As you can see, we're pretty good. We are currently running at 2400 an hour. I really missed, but as you can see, it does work pretty good. Um, that's pretty much it as far as getting it set up. Uh, why you, you know, if you have any questions about it, feel free to contact us. Uh, you can go to our website. It's got the video on there. It's got the uh, part numbers for the parts you're going to need before you can get started with this. And while you're there, if you're loading 300 blackout or 223556, be sure to pick up one of our uh, Burley shell plates. Uh, they help quite a bit with case wobble. Uh, well improved over Dylan's factory ones. And uh, they're just, they're 100 times better than Dylan's factory ones uh, as far as case wobble or anything like that. Shell insertion into the shell plate. So, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. I'm going to get started loading here, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great day.